Ladies and gentlemen, my first guest tonight is an acclaimed actor from the stage and screen. He's now reprising one of his most iconic roles, Jean-Luc Picard in Star Trek Picard. Lieutenant Commander Data, operations officer on the Enterprise with Synthetic. Did you ever lose faith in him? Never. What was it that you lost faith in, Admiral? You've never spoken about your departure from Starfleet. Didn't you, in fact, resign your commission in protest? Tell us, Admiral. Why did you really quit Starfleet? Because it was no longer Starfleet. I'm sorry? Because it was no longer Starfleet. Please welcome Patrick Stewart. <laughs> So lovely to see you again. Uh, it's so good to be back. You're Listen. looking as dashing as ever. Really? Yes. <laughs> wow. No. Oh, nice. What form does the dash take? I mean, I don't do what you do. How do you do that running thing? How, how do I run? How do you do it? I've had my knees replaced several times on oh, the show. Oh, well. I'm more machine than man at this point. Hey. You should be in our show. I would love to. Oh, do you know how much I would love to be in your show? Yeah. Don't really? do, uh, do not do not start something you can't finish. Okay. Jean Luc. Let's uh, come let's, on. Let's have a little tiny audition then. What about uh, you say, make it so. Number one, make it so. Oh wait, hey. <laughs> That's amazing. Ah, I mean... The last time, the last time you played Jean-Luc Picard, if I'm not mistaken, is 2002's uh, Star Trek Nemesis. Correct. Okay, so I gotta imagine, in the last 18 years, people have been tugging on you to get you to play Jean-Luc many times. Why this time and not before in the, in the last 18 years? Correct. Um, when I opened the invitation, the details that came through my agency. You got an invitation? Like, please <laughs> come to a celebration of you yeah. accepting this part? What we was want, the... Well, we, we, we would love to meet with you and talk to you about an idea we have bringing back Jean-Luc. And uh, there was uh, Michael Chabon, Akiva Goldsman, um, uh, Alex Kurtzman, uh, Kirsten Beyer, an extraordinary an group, of group of writing people, yeah. talent. Not just television, but novels. Uh, Michael got a Pulitzer Prize for uh, his Cavalier and Clay. Clay. Yeah. And uh, I was intrigued. I mean, it's not often you get invitations from four guys like that. Yeah. Four, three guys and a gal. Right, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I mean, no offense. <laughs> that was... Well, th the show opens uh, with, um, well, I won't say what exactly it opens with, but very early on we see uh, Picard, the captain, um, on a French vineyard, which is where he lives now, with his companion, uh, number one, yes. who is pictured right here, is a, uh, a pit bull right there. Um, Whose idea was it to make number one a uh, pit bull terrier? I... First of all, it, I, I did suggest that when I was seen in the vineyard, I should, I'm alone, but it would be great if I had a dog with me because a man alone with a dog, that sets up certain emotional dependencies, I think. Sure. And... Was that funny? Yes. Oh. A man alone just looks like a drifter. <laughs> and, uh, and, and they agreed. They thought it was a good idea. And I said, however, I need one breed of dog. It must be a pit bull. And I want to try and find the most impressive-looking pit bull that's in Hollywood. He's an incredible yeah. dog. Now, 
You've dedicated you've dedicated a lot of time to supporting uh, the image of pit bulls. Or, you know, rehabilitating the people's minds. Why is that so important to you? Well. <clears throat> Um, we began fostering about four years ago because, uh, you know, we travel so much and move about. But within 36 hours of fostering Ginger, who is now an international superstar on social media, um, we knew we had found the dog for life, for the rest of my life, certainly. And then we discovered we couldn't take him to England because he's a banned breed. They call it league, uh, um, a breed specific legislation. There are four breeds banned and one of them is pit bulls because they're dangerous dogs. Now, they're not dangerous dogs. All pit bulls want to do is make their owners happy, please them. But if that means, thank you. If that means fighting other dogs because it makes your master happy, yes, you'll do it because you're pleasing the guy who looks after you. That's why they got that reputation. And there have been incidents, but there have been incidents with all breeds of dogs. And these are the sweetest, most empathic, most sensitive creatures that I've ever known. Well, that's a beautiful reason. A beautiful reason to have that dog. Well... You got, you've, you've had many honors over the years, sir, in, including the sir, right? Yes. Okay. So, but you got a big one last week, which I, I just love. This is one I would look forward to someday if I could ever earn it, is that you got your hands and feet immortalized at Hollywood's TCL Chinese Theater. There you go. There are the actual images. What was that like for you? Did you have, was this something that you thought of growing up? Because this is an image I've had in my mind since I was a child. If I thought of it, I would have dismissed it immediately. But there is a little story behind it, if I may just tell you. I'll That's keep, what we're I'll here keep for. it very brief. Yeah. I first came here as a professional actor in 1968 with the Royal Shakespeare Company. The Amundsen Theatre, the Music Centre had just been opened. And we did, I think, a six week season doing two plays. Now, when our first day off came, where did we head? Hollywood, of course. We wanted to get some excitement, feel the buzz of being in the middle of the film capital of the world. And we found the, the, what used to be called Grauman's Chinese Theater. It's now the Chinese Theater. And we looked at these slabs of concrete with footprints and handprints and incredibly famous signatures signed in them. And with me was a colleague, another actor from the company playing you know, small supporting roles, was a guy called Ben Kingsley. <laughs> and Ben and I, we, we stood looking at this stuff going, wow, what, what must it be like? It must be amazing. Well, there I was getting to do it myself. And Hollywood is... American movies always had a huge influence on me. I saw them when I was young, and they... Well, my... Childhood wasn't great, so movies were an escape. As acting, for me, for a long time became an escape, I didn't have to be Patrick Stewart anymore. I could be somebody else mm -hmm. and lead another life other than the life that I was leading. And so to be on Hollywood Boulevard, doing that where so many famous names, I mean, incredibly distinguished and brilliant people have been. Well, I have one. There is one, Patrick, there's one obvious follow-up question there. Has Ben Kingsley gotten it? Okay. Um, <laughs> I hope to be discussing this with Ben very soon. But no, he has no. But gotcha. he got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame before I did. So we're kind of 50-50. Tit for tat, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, wonderful to see you. Thank you so much for being here again. <laughs> Star Trek Picard premieres this Thursday on CBS All Access. Patrick Stewart, everybody. We'll be right back with talk show legend, Mr. Dick Cavett.